because retinol is really unstable. So you have to have a lot of stabilizing ingredients, and they'll put all kinds of things to stabilize retinol. For the most part, what they'll do is they won't put any retinol. Skincare companies, formulators won't put very much retinol in their so-called retinol products. I don't like calling companies out by name, but there's some that are just so egregious that they really deserve to, to be called out by name. And one is a company called ROC, Rock, And they have a commercial running about their retinol product. Also, Neutrogena has a commercial running for their retinol product. But they don't tell you there's hardly any retinol in there. Just because it says retinol on the label doesn't mean you're going to get a retinol effect. You've got to have the right amount. Problem, retinol is irritating for some folks. So skincare companies don't want to do that. So they'll tell you. They'll do a song and dance. They'll have a jargon. They'll have a slogan. They'll have a commercial about the retinol. But there won't be much in it. You need to have anywhere from 2% minimum to 5% to really get the good effects. You'll get some effects maybe at 1% as you approach 1%. You know, it's on a continuum. But if you really want the retinol benefit, you've got to have a lot of it. And you've got to have it in a formulation that's carefully, carefully structured and designed. Because retinol is so unstable. It breaks things down. Skincare companies don't want to mess around with that. They'd rather do a song and dance. But that's not fair to you and your skin, which is why I came out with my truth treatment 5% retinol. And you don't get irritated because it's in a clever formulation, if I do say so myself, with no preservatives and no irritants and a bunch of vitamin C to boot. Not that this is supposed to be commercial because if you could find 5% retinol in a kind formulation, you don't need my truth treatment products or my truth treatment retinol gel. It's about the retinol, 5%. 4%, 3%. I don't know of any that have that high percentage, although there are some 2%s out there. Retinol palmitate, not going to do anything for you. Retinoic acid will. It's, it's 100 times more potent than retinol, but you need a prescription for it. It only comes in crapola formulations. Retin-A is a crapola formulation. Now, generic forms of it. Do you know they put sodium lauryl sulfate in retin-A? I, I haven't seen it, actually. I shouldn't say that, but they used to. They probably still do. Sodium lauryl sulfate, the same detergent that's in your shampoo, and in your shower gels, it's now not even being used as detergents because it's so irritating, is actually in retino, Retin-A. Now, who came up with that? Oh, yeah, the drug company. Can you imagine this? You have an irritating ingredient. Retinoic acid is already an irritating ingredient. And then you put in sodium lauryl sulfate in the formulation on top of the preservatives and the propylene glycol. And the, I, I love this one. Uh, a couple years ago, actually about 15, 15 years ago, maybe more, maybe 20 years ago, uh, Johnson & Johnson, the company that was making Retin-A, they were getting all of these complaints, and pharmacists were getting all these complaints about how Retin-A was really irritating. They wanted to use the Retin-A, but it was causing too much dryness. So you know what uh, Johnson & Johnson did? They actually cleverly went back to the drawing board and created a new product they called... Uh, they called Renova, which is marketed as the Retin-A for dry skin. And you know what it is? It's Retin-A with mineral oil. And that was their solution to the dry skin problem. And then they could charge 20 bucks more, too, because they put the mineral oil in there. This is the, the, the predatory skincare world we live in. And it's really based on the idea that nobody really appreciates the skin. We don't really treat the skin as if it's a fully-fledged organ. We treat it like it's some kind of marginalized, you know, uh, crazy ant that lives in the basement. That's what our skin is. We just smear anything on the skin. Would you ever treat your heart or your liver or your spleen the way you treat your skin? Would you ever rub something on your heart if you had a heart problem or a liver problem? Would you rub something on your liver? But for the skin, we have this notion that because it's resilient and because it's so, so strong and vital and it can repel things, it doesn't really matter. And skincare companies take advantage of that, unfortunately. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Vitamin E, I'll continue on a little bit about vitamin E. I want to get to some, actually, you know what? I think I got an interesting, uh, we'll talk about vitamin E, and we'll talk tomorrow, we'll talk about vitamin E and diabetes, vitamin E and something called metabolic syndrome, which it wasn't that long ago that nobody heard of metabolic syndrome. These days, a lot of folks know about it. Uh, I want to get to, uh, it's got this letter from Kimberly. She wrote, hi, I will be 35 next month. I'll be dealing with amenorrhea. That means not getting your periods for four years and struggling with infertility. Her right ovary was removed in a surgery that, get this, perforated her intestine. The scar tissue initially caused um, a hydro, I don't know what she's saying here, hydrosalpinx. I'm not sure what she's saying, but anyway, her period stopped. She's been diagnosed with early menopause. This is all after she had surgery, folks. All right, here's the deal. 
And she's taking a digestive enzymes. She says she's taking something called seropeptase, lecithin. Uh, here's the deal. If you are a woman and you aren't getting your period, you have a hormone issue. That's it. Periods uh, are dependent on estrogen and progesterone largely and under conditions of duress, under conditions of stress, the hormone system, the female reproductive hormone system is going to be messed up especially as we go through menopause. So what you want to do if you're having any female reproductive issues, amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, these are no periods or messed up periods, yeah, periods out of uh, short periods or, or periods in, in, uh, that don't occur in full cycles, whatever, PMS issues, you want to first and foremost focus on the digestive system. There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, because the fats are very important for making estrogen and progesterone, keeping everything in balance, especially essential fatty acids. EFAs are also important for inflammation and anti-inflammation. And rest assured, if you have a female reproductive issue, you have an inflammatory issue. EFAs get turned into inflammatory chemicals and pro-inflammatory chemicals. So after working on fat absorption, make sure you're getting enough EFAs and make sure you're protecting your EFAs with vitamin E. And that means both omega-6s and omega-3s. This gal, Kimberly, you need to be using your ultimate EFAs along with vitamin E. In addition to using the digestive, uh, digestive nutrients that help you process fats, the ultimate enzymes and the Z, uh, Fucoid Z or the Z radical. I like the Fucoid Z better. You may want to throw in the glucogel caps. Digestive enzymes are super duper important. Kimberly says she's taking something called serapeptidase, which is a, a, a peptide amino acid. That's a good idea. Any, uh, old, any digestive enzymes will help you. Lecithin, uh, Kimberly says she's taking lecithin. That's a smart idea. And don't forget about the microbiome. This is one of the most important roles that the good bacteria play in the body. They help us process fats and fatty hormones. If you're not processing fats and fatty hormones, especially you are more at risk for estrogen diseases, including autoimmunity and cancer and problems with your reproductive cycle, uh, period problems. This is one of the reasons why it's mostly women that get things like fibromyalgia and autoimmune diseases, because it's mostly women that are not processing their, processing their estrogen correctly. And sometimes estrogen gets the blame when it's really poorly processed estrogen, and that means working on your probiotics, among other things. Bile is also important for helping process estrogen, as is the liver. And also, guess what? As it turns out, vitamin E can help you process estrogen, too. We'll be talking about that in the next few days as we continue talking skin health and wound healing and the fatty system of the body and fatty nutrients. Thanks for listening, friends. Check out my uh, blog, PharmacistBen.com. You can order products right off of PharmacistBen.com, also CriticalHealthNews.com and BrightSideBen.com. And Make sure to check out truthtreatments.com and take a look at our retinol 5% gel. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. Bye for now.